All right, so people often ask me, how do I paste someone? Um, so I paste a couple of people up Twitter tab, and I've done some more in Adelaide and some with my friends back home. So today I was trying to paste Tori um, for a PR. Uh, I quite enjoy pacing in some ways, just because it allows me to do a bit of an effort, not that hard, and I don't get too carried away or anything. Um, and like on, on this week, it's a rest week, so I don't really need to do much training. So it's good just doing like, you know, just a tempo up the doy. So anyway, first I do is figure out what, what time people want to get. Um, so generally, I just look at their time um, and figure out what we want. So you can see Tori um, is, yeah, 37.27. So I generally just look at people's times and figure out how much time I think they get off. So I think Tori's before was like 38 minutes. So I was thinking, you know, 37, 38 minutes is roughly what I need to do. Um, and then figure out what what's I need to do. So after you figured out what time, I then just go on to my results. Um, and this has, so I've done gone up 14 times. So you'll get, you know, a decent spread. So I know like some of these have been on the wheel. So 320 watts on the wheel is quite different to 311 watts again on the wheel, different to 296 watts off the wheel. So you can see that's it wouldn't really be that much of a difference like if that was all on the wheel, but because that was pretty much mainly Soto, there's quite a big difference in time. Um, so anyway, the other week I did a 35 minute, maybe it was. Um, yeah, 35.05, no, no, 34.07, that was it. Uh, maybe? Well, I can't remember. Anyway, I paced Josh. Yeah, this was it, 34.15. Um, so that was like basically... Uh, again, I just looked at the watts and was like, I probably need to 285 watts. So you can see I've done three efforts at 285 watts. And they all change slightly, like, between a minute, just depending if I have water bottles. So I had two full water bottles on this effort here. Uh, so there's always a little bit of variation, but that's pretty good. So anyway, um, actually before today, which is the 12th of June, uh, there was actually quite a big difference in my times. So you can see there's like a five-minute difference. So I roughly guessed probably my aim was to hold 265 watts. Uh, and you can see I held 267. So that was all right. Uh, it wasn't great pacing to be honest like I was pacing with another person next to me and like Sometimes I feel like I just get too distracted by the person next to me um, And I like care what they're doing too much But it's like actually like if you're the one who's gonna do the pacing like the person next to you will just follow your pace So it's fine. You just ignore them But sometimes I got too carried away with looking at them and seeing what they were doing uh, So anyway, you can see here's my power my power data. It's not that smooth like I mean if you really think about it, it's not Crazy smooth. I know Doi Step isn't the best for smooth power, like 100%, because there is a little bit of undulations here or there, so it's quite hard to keep the power completely smooth. But if you look at the beginning bit, we held like 270 for the first um, six minutes, so we, we basically positively split it really. Um, and then the last part, you can see there's always this little sprint at the end, which is why I really, you sort of need to do a sprint, but I feel like people still leave too much left uh, at the end. So this sprint at the end was like 330 watts for 30 seconds, um, which is just a little bit too much. I feel like uh, for Tori, she could have had more in the tank. But when you're pacing someone, like the best thing to do is basically at the beginning, try and just go a little bit faster than you think they should, um, just to try and like get them to, I don't know, it just seems to work better, I find, because people always seem to be suffering the same at the end, no matter how long the effort is, really. So it's almost better just to go slightly harder at the beginning and then just ease off towards the end, because then the person often like, I don't know, they just, people seem to do better when I do that technique instead of doing a, a positive split like when i'm on my own i prefer a positive split but with other people they don't, they don't seem to prefer it as much um so you can see here 272 for the first five minutes so we went out a little bit hard but there's a little steep ramp at the beginning where you just you just sort of need to get over it a little bit harder um so in terms of the climb you can see here it's pretty it's pretty good gradient mainly undulates between five and eight percent more or less four and eight percent probably and there's a little bit of downhill bit here so this is when you what you really want to do is just make sure that person's on the wheel and then just charge it up so i went a little bit too hard because i was like 370 watts or whatever but if they're on your wheel like 40 k's an hour they're like barely going to be pedaling um when it's slightly downhill so that's another good thing and going around corners as well like um i'll show you some footage probably uh about that but going around corners like it's just good not to surge straight out the corner generally in the pros they say to leave three seconds but that's because they have a longer lead out so if you're a guy at the front you take the corner wait three seconds then you hit it so that the guy at the back isn't sprinting out the corner but if it's just one person behind you, you probably just wait like half a second to a second before you really like sort of I don't know, increase the power. Like, you might not realize you do it, but round corners, almost everyone slightly slows down. And then round that corner, if the person's really on the limit and they have to accelerate, that's really one that can hurt quite a lot. Um, on the flatter parts, you want to hit it a little bit harder. And people, when they're drafting behind you, they'll say they always find the flatter parts slightly harder. And that's just because they're accelerating. And it's obviously, as soon as you're accelerating, like, that hurts a little bit. And then when you come into the steeper parts, you can actually hit it a little bit harder at the bottom because the person behind you is carrying slightly 
they're carrying the same speed, and the momentum's not really that, but it's more like they're just drafting. So they're carrying, um, when they go behind you, they're still getting the draft on that first little bit, so that when you get into the bottom of the, a steep part, so let's say it's going from 4% up to maybe 8 or 9%, at the very beginning, when you're drafting, it'll actually feel easier, just for maybe the first 5 to 10 seconds. So if you're on the front, you can just drill it, just maybe 5 to 10 watts higher, depending on like what power you're doing. Um, and the person behind won't really notice. That will just feel like a consistent effort. And then as soon as maybe after you do five, ten seconds, then you just drop it back down into the same goal power that you have. Um, and I find that helps quite a lot. And over the top of rises, don't accelerate too much. I know you want to because that's how you keep the average speed high. Is if you over the little peaks, you want to get rid of like the times when you're spending. Like so, the the time you're spending the the like slowest amount of speed at so let's say you're going over the top of thing and you're only 15k an hour and you want to average 20 you want to spend the least amount of time at that point but if you surge too much the person behind you is just going to be really struggling um so when you're pacing you really want to think about the person behind you and what they're thinking about um and like how they're going to be feeling um and for me it's i found that quite hard because i've never really been paced by anyone I've always just done them solo or whatever, but recently Paul's been pacing me and I've really like, that helps you quite a lot because then you're, when you're pacing someone, you can imagine what they're going through. Like round the corners, you know it's going to be surgy, um, which is all right, but then going into the corner, you know that they're going to be a slightly going a bit more casual because round that corner, um, you'll slow down. So it's sort of like you surge at different points, um, but it also depends what sort of person you're pacing. So if your person is pacing someone who's heavier than you, then it makes sense to drill it on the flat because they have more watts, uh, absolute watts than you. Um, if for the same watts per kilo. But if you're pacing someone who's lighter than you, it doesn't really make sense to drill it on the flat because they're just going to be struggling. It's better to, like, obviously you want to put more power on the flat than the steeper parts, but at the same, because they get more of a draft. But you, again, you don't really want to be like, if they're a lighter person, absolutely drilling on the flat because they're just going to struggle. It's better just to, um, you know, put drill a little bit harder on the uphills where it's real steep if they're lighter than you because then their watts per kilo, um, they'll be just be going faster than you. So it's actually, like, it will be easier for them on the steeper parts. Um, and that's about it, really. I mean, most of it is just like, just figuring out what the person's like, listening to their breathing. I don't normally do pacings with headphones in because I like to listen to the person's breathing, just figure out like how much that's hurting or whatever. Um, and a lot of it is sort of unexact science. I mean, like you just sort of do the number and just hope the person like is gonna do it. And the best people to pace are the people who actually tell you if it's too easy or too hard. Um, like when I was pacing Dan in Adelaide, he was really good because he just shouted at me if I wasn't going hard enough, which is good. So then it's just like you absolutely murder yourself for like three or four minutes and then cheerio, that's it. Um, but I, the people I hate, um, and Tori does this sometimes, and I know a couple other people I've, I've paced before have done it, is that they don't tell you if you're going hard enough. So they'll finish the segment and be like, that wasn't even that hard. It's like, well, you've got to tell me, or like by either riding past me because the pace is too slow or just shout at me saying like, up. Because there's no point if you're on the front thinking this is good what's. Um, and you're holding the time, but if they're feeling good, then they should tell you that you've got to go faster. And it's really hard for you to realize that it's easy for them. Like sometimes you're like, oh, it seems a little bit easy. But you're like, oh, maybe they'll be suffering at the beginning or maybe they're hiding their suffering. Um, but that's one thing, just have the good communication that they just shout at you um, if it's too easy. And then if it's too hard, like that's the most annoying thing. But the best thing to do is just like, if you see they drop the wheel, just literally stop pedaling, wait till they hop back on and then just try and decrease. So let's say today I was doing 267, sometimes like, Tori would drop the wheel, so I just hold it at like 250, and then generally that was fine. So sometimes it's only five or 10 watt difference. Um, that means if someone's gonna hold the wheel or not hold the wheel. Uh, and that's sort of the top tips from me. If you have any more tips for pacing, um, then leave them in the comments below. I find that pacing anything over 15K an hour, you get a good draft, do enjoy it. Like 10% gradients, you still get a good draft. It's really only when you're going below 15K an hour, I find like there's draft a little bit, but not really, like just more of a wind block. But 20k an hour plus is a real good draft. Over 25k an hour, you're fucking laughing. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope this helps you if you're pacing anyone. Uh, but the best thing to do is just figure out what, what you've got to do. Um, actually, I'll just mention quickly, if you don't have watts, then it's harder. But it's not impossible. Like A lot of it is just going by feel, like figuring out what the effort would feel like for you. So today, like I didn't stare at my power meter. I just didn't know what 260... 265, 270 watts feels like. Um, and you, I guess you just have to think about that. I know Dan, Demonic Dan, he does a lot of pacing because he doesn't have a power meter. And you just sort of figure out like, oh, what would be, a, let's say, a 35 minute doy time be? And you'll be like, well, it would hurt a little bit, but not too much. And then you have to think like, I don't have a power meter, so I'm probably gonna go out too hard. So you just go a little bit conservative at the beginning. Um, I guess the best thing to do is really look at the average speed, look at the gradient and figure out what average speed you need for the whole thing. And then figure out, oh, if it's 10%, I'm going to go slightly slower. I'm not going to try and hold the average speed. And if it's lower, and then 
a lot of it is sort of just getting to know the climbs. Like obviously if you've done a climb 20 times, 50 times, you probably know how fast you need to go for each different thing. Uh, but heart rate, I, I mean, it's impossible to pace by heart rate. Like it's just dumb. So don't do that. Just either do it by average speed or just do it on feel. Um, also average speed and feel or power and feel. That's the best way of doing it. Or just absolute power if you just don't trust your body. But anyway, cheers for watching. I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next vid. Try to push past, but he wants to play.